I'm Dave Allen, and uh, I'm the uh, I'm one of the founding members of uh, the English post-punk band Gang of Four, um, the most notorious for our debut album, Entertainment, which we delivered in 1979. It seems like a long time ago. Um, I currently live in Portland, Oregon. Um, I run a, a big music blog called uh, Pamplemoose.com, and um, I also run um, a brand strategy company, or I'm a partner in a brand strategy company, uh, more in the sort of uh, ad and marketing world, um, where we um, help clients um, understand the uh, intricacies of uh, their entire brand, top to bottom, especially on the web, uh, where there's been some difficulty in transitioning from uh, the analog world to the web for many companies, and probably not least musicians too, is why we're here talking, right? Yeah, just recently I've been trying to um, um, expand um, on my thoughts about how to <coughs> how a band could effectively, or even a, a single musician, you know, just talk about musicians in general, um, how they could effectively um, really use the web because of its what I call the zero barrier to entry model. There's there's no cost to this, but um, when I talk about the difference between strategy and tactics, um, you know, here's one example would be. Um, the 1,000 true fans model. Um, I don't know if everyone's heard of that, but um, the idea there is that you find 1,000 people that are really, really passionate about your music and um, anything you do, and you reach out to them. You make sure that you look after that 1,000-person that crowd as often and you know, put as much music and, and maybe T-shirts, uh, maybe it's short videos, just share lots and lots of content with them. And the idea being that they turn around and pretty much buy everything that you're putting out. So you've built, you started to build your base. So the strategy would be go find 1,000 true fans um, and attain them and retain them. And then the tactical side is, is pretty simple. That's when you would use Facebook, MySpace, your own website, any other uh, sort of social network forums uh, to spread the word about, hey, I'm trying to gather uh, or find 1,000 true fans. So that's sort of a, a very simplified idea of it, but bigger things become, like, if you think about Radiohead and how they released In Rainbows, there was a New Year's Eve live webcast from their studio in England uh, where they pretty much played a whole bunch of the new material from the album before the album came out. You know, that's still tactical, but the overall strategy was to, um, bring awareness to the upcoming release, which is going to be released, in, in an album that's going to be released in a very different way. It kind of shook things up. So it's really sitting down and saying, what is the strategy for success? And then everything else after that, once you've determined that, becomes tactical. The, the please be brilliant idea is really based around um, what I would hope is game-changing ideas in music, uh, game-changing ways of delivering that music, uh, however you want to deliver it, by the way. I'm not suggesting that it must always just be on the web. It, it was, there's uh, other ways of releasing music. Um, but the point is, like you, you, you just said, the, we just talked about the, the uh, attention scarcity. So it's like if you don't do something that's almost like an event when you release music, then why should anyone care? Because I think that more than anything, because of this access, this global access to so much entertainment, technically, online, then um, it is really difficult for you to gain attention. So why can't what you do always be thought through very, very, very strongly? And it's then considered, this moved the needle. This is the sort of way that other artists could learn from and develop different ways and means of marketing and promoting themselves. Um, and I think that one of the conundrums for artists and, and musicians is that the label system has sort of settled into just pretty happily attaining whatever sales they can attain. And I, what I mean by that is the independent label system particularly. You know, if you had a hit, uh, an indie hit, sold 100,000 albums, say, uh, you know, the beginning of the last decade, then, yeah, wow, there was still a market. But that seems to have shrunk down now to about 10,000 is a good number 
in CD sales and then you're trying to make up the rest in some kind of digital sale. But my argument is when, when something like uh, Fever Ray, who I've used as an example, uh, Karen Anderson from um, The Knife, solo album, this band called Fever Ray, she just came up with something that was like musically, it was like strikingly sort of from left to center, and yet it was, it was also very commercial, the songs that stick in your head. It was delivered with um, a video for each particular track on the album. A lot of that was all available online for free. Um, the performances she puts on, her live performances are just like performance art technically, and she seems to be never out of character, so she's basically living and sleeping fever ray, currently at least, and um, I know when she turns up at Coachella next month, it's going to blow a lot of minds because there'll be a lot of people who perhaps haven't really been exposed to her music or her performance. But that's what I consider doing something in a brilliant way. Um, and the opposite of that is just releasing a CD and hoping people will buy it. And, and I know that sounds like a wide gulf, but you know we've really got to um, step it up, I would argue. If, if you want to stand out, you've got to really step it up and um, be brilliant. Well, uh, so first of all, I don't argue against using MySpace. I'm not anti, they're what I call tools. You know, Facebook, MySpace, any of these, um, you know, Lala, iTunes, whatever you can get your music out is a good thing. Um, what, I, what I worry about is like, if there are millions and millions of MySpace accounts, or bands, I should say, with MySpace accounts, uh, how, again, how do you stand out in this sort of really weird, level playing field. Um, you know, you can use a Gang of Four as an example. There's, there's a Gang of Four MySpace page and I don't know, it's got umpteen thousand uh, fans, but I, I can't reach them. You can't speak to them and they can't really communicate with you except through this platform which re really ultimately is white noise. So I would argue it's so much better to have just your own website with your own URL and uh, make sure that you're communicating to and fro with the really dedicated hardcore fans. Um, but more importantly, um, this is something that's uh, overlooked, I think, by bands, is with the advent of Google Music Search, where you can now search for any band using Google Music Search. And in the search results, there's the ability to play a track. Um, now, if your URL for your own website is you know, front and center in that search, and you can click through directly to your site where there's a call for action, say buy our t-shirt, buy our music, buy our concert tickets, sign up, join our email list. That is really vitally important these days. If you, and it's, it's beginning to cut through the attention deficit at that point. Now, if you don't have your own URL, um, you're going to have your MySpace page come up first in the, in the Google search rankings and people will go there and bingo, now they're just in this whole MySpace, you know, crazy off the wall Disneyland of like whatever you can find and get and now you're going to that one click away from everything because somebody may go off and follow a, hey look at that girl looks cute, that fan follow of you, click through there and off they go, right? And, and you, so what is the end result of landing on your MySpace page again? So it's not strategic, it's just...